Hello again, YouTube. My name is Brie and I'm back. So last month was a very busy month. And if you saw my videos, you know that I created seven videos where I normally create two a month. And at the end of that Birdtober video series, I stated that I will be back at the beginning of November after taking a bit of a break. And I clearly missed the first week of November. So basically what happened was I got very into the habit of painting those little birds in 45 minutes to an hour every day and then i plan to take a bit of a break from art and definitely from making videos and then start early on this one and have it done with plenty of time to spare before the first week of november but what actually happened is my lovely friend spoof bought me or made me two miniature sketchbooks for my birthday and so if you follow me on instagram you've seen those but they were even smaller than the two by two inch sketchbook that I use for Birdtober. And so I had to keep painting birds for the rest of the month. So when I said I was going to take a break, I actually ended up painting nine more birds and then tried to do this in a single weekend or s probably even a single day and it didn't work out. So I decided to take the rest of the week to kind of play catch up on art and put out a video this week instead. So my goal for this was just to get back in the swing of painting people again, since that seems to be my normal thing. I do love painting birds, but I just painted a lot of them. So I wanted to get back and draw a random dude again. And I wanted to do something large. So for me, A4 is pretty large. So this is an A4 sketchbook from Etcher. It's the white cover sketchbook, the perfect sketchbook. Or is that just their regular etcher? I think it's their regular etcher sketchbook. I have no idea what supplies I'm using. And it's the cold press paper. So I decided I hadn't done cotton paper in a while. I hadn't done anything large in a while. Everything's been like two by two inches or smaller. Let's go big. So here we are. And I went into this with really no plan. I had the TV on. I don't, I'm not even sure what I was watching. Just background noise. And I was kind of sketching until I landed on something and then cleaned it up and started to paint it. So once again, working fairly large in terms of what I'm used to, I know this isn't a massive watercolor painting. Plenty of other people do actual massive watercolor paintings. So yeah, etch your sketchbook. Um, just to go over supplies real quick, since we were already, already kind of on that topic, that's my Schmincke watercolors. And the brushes I'm currently using, I didn't even know I was using this in the beginning. By the time I get to the second week and I'm working on this, because I basically took the whole week off, um, I didn't have this paintbrush out anymore, so I didn't use it again. But I was using the um, quill, quill Mop brush from Treckle, the bigger one, which I haven't actually used that much. So I wanted to play with that some more. And then the other brush I primarily use is a Princeton Velvet Touch, um, and those are just for kind of blending and lifting. And I guess I also use the Vel uh, the Princeton Neptune, the smaller brush here. I don't think I use that after this day's worth of filming. So I really didn't have much of a goal or plan going into this one. I know I already said that. Um, I kind of knew, I think I knew I wanted to give him really light or white hair. And beyond that, I had no idea what I was going to do. Um, I kind of went with my comfort zone colors, which at this point, actually, no, I don't even think I used that because I know generally I use a lot of yellow ochre. I think I actually started with burnt sienna and then use my Indian throne blue and carmine red. I believe those are kind of, those are pretty standard for me at this point for most of this. And I definitely added some other colors just to, I should actually know I used vermilion quite a bit to warm it up later. I didn't actually realize how cool the painting was because the first day I was painting it was Halloween and I was wearing a bright orange shirt. So I think I was catching a bit of like reflected light and thinking the painting was warmer than it was. And then when I came back to it later, maybe the next day wearing a gray shirt or something, I realized how cool the piece was and added vermilion to warm it up. So beyond that, I didn't know. I left the eyes completely empty 
for the longest time because I had no idea even like what color I wanted the eyes to be and then I decided to stay colorless um so in the long run his eyes are pretty white and I just to really push that difference I ended up doing a dark background and I didn't like how it came out so there's a lot of mistakes I feel I made with this piece and I'm trying to be kind to myself because I'm not often working at this size. I went for a big transition between just painting birds for an entire month and working really small to working what for me, like I said, is really large. And then, yeah, adding in some things I don't usually do, like a super dark background. So, and yeah, no planning. It's okay. This is the first piece back to what I was doing. I, I get a little bit of a break. I'm just happy to have a video <laughs> ready to put out this week because I feel pretty weird about it if I had missed another week. So plan ahead and things go better. This actually took me almost seven hours to do, which once again, isn't a huge amount of time. I've definitely spent 40 hours on a single painting before. Um like a full illustration. I haven't done one of those in a long time. And that was digital, which I also haven't done in a really long time. But for a watercolor piece, especially after spending mostly like 40 minutes on a bird, 45 minutes, um, this, this was a very long piece. And I get, I kind of get lose interest in things when I'm working on them for too long. And I definitely was noodling. If I planned ahead better, I would have known what I was doing. And I would have been able to reach for that goal and be a little bit more deliberate in what I was doing. So it really is my own fault. Um, I didn't want to plan something out. I just wanted to see what would happen. <laughs> I didn't, I am so bad about pre-planning, but I think I'm going to work on that <laughs> going forward. I definitely want to think through the pieces more. And you could check me on that again in a couple weeks when I post my next video and say probably the same things because I don't learn from my mistakes very often. <laughs> so We'll see what happens. I actually am feeling a little directionless right now. After spending so much time with a very focused theme, I really, I, it was really easy because every day I would just, huh, what bird do I want to paint today? And I'd go on a walk and go, that's the bird I'm painting today. And it made things super easy. And while I didn't, I enjoyed doing Birdtober, but to some extent I felt constrained because I wanted to reach out and do more things it made things very easy. So coming off of that, it's it's giving me too many options and I'm feeling a little lost right now. And I know I have some like art goals I want to aim for, but the more I think about it, the closer it is to the end of the year, there's so much going on that I don't want to overly plan things and then not hit those goals because between November, December, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, there's just so many things happening that I'm going to be out of town a lot and just preoccupied with like even little things like decorating and having some time off of work and not in December. But I'll probably spend that with family. And if I'm not with family, I'm probably trying to catch up on chores. And I say that after having done chores for most of today. So that's why <laughs> if I sound exhausted, it's I've just been cleaning all day. And it, the cleaning one, the cleaning has defeated me. So yeah, we'll see. I, I will definitely figure out things and it might even be like towards the end of the year, I start to really think through what I want to focus on next year and really build an actionable plan. Um, <laughs> because like last year I even said, Hey, I'm going, I want to do 12 like full pieces, like illustrations with backgrounds. And that did not happen at all, which isn't to say I really failed on the goal, but I think I did improve a lot this year. So I don't want to be overly critical. I didn't reach this goal. No, but I did a lot to improve my technique and my style and I didn't engage in a lot of challenges just for the sake of doing challenges. It was like Birdtober. It was something I wanted to do for me. I love painting birds. i had been meaning to do, fill up that little Han Emulay's exact sketchbook with birds from my local area for quite some time. So it all to some extent aligned with things I had been wanting to do. And I really feel I have grown quite a bit this year with my, I don't know why it's, with my art, if I have grown. So yeah. I've made progress. It just, I didn't hit the goals I wanted to hit. 
I think I'm going to work on those next year and really try to get to where I thought I might get this year. There's nothing wrong with taking extra time to reach your goals. There's no like, for me at least, there's no firm deadline of you have to get to this point by this date. I'm not really trying to build a portfolio or anything. I don't have specific ambitions with time frames that need to, I need to hit. So it's all good. It's just where I want to get to at some point. So I don't really feel I failed. I just plan to do more in the future. So this is one spot I really felt I just kept screwing up. Um, I don't know what happened. I think the angle I was sitting at, I looked at the back and I felt it was really off. And then the more I played with it, I think the worse it got. So I was really not happy with that. Um, I did spend a bit of time there trying to lift some paint, which it was staining enough like I'd been working on cellulose paper for quite some time and going back to cotton it both absorbs more of the paint um, once it dries in and I'm using some staining colors so it happens oh well commit to it <laughs> move on I did add some white gouache and white gel pen later in this piece to help with some of the little things I wanted to bring forward but I didn't I don't know I think I did throw some gouache on the back at some point of course it just lifts up again all right here's where i'm doing the background and for the background i went from my schminka paints to my daniel smith paints and while schminka does have a lot of granulating paints and there are even plenty of them in this palette they i don't have any of their super granulating paints and sometimes i just really want to play with texture so i go for my daniel smith my daniel smith palette's more my granulating palette where my schminka i have a lot more flat colors and it's fine, different paints for different purposes. But what I did was I basically mixed, I want to say Moon Glow, Ultramarine, and Imperial Purple, which are all granulating colors, just to really go crazy. <laughs> Once again, didn't really plan ahead. And then I started throwing some Cerulean in there to give it pops of different color, but I don't think the paper was as wet as I thought it was. And doing this big wash with a quill brush probably wasn't my best plan so things didn't go on quite as smoothly as I expected them to and once again normally not working this large um, clips can usually handle buckling fairly well but because of the size of the paper even though those are bigger clips it definitely buckled more than I planned so water settled in the little valleys of the paper and None of that went on smooth, so <laughs> I was not really happy with this at all. Um, I went over it a few times to both try to darken it up and even it up, and I think even after it dried and without filming again, I just put another layer on after because paint, um, not paint's gray, Moon Glow has a pretty substantial drying shift. So it dried up a lot, and then I threw some paint's gray on, and it's just a blotchy mess, and I, I really... I hated the background. <laughs> I hated how I framed the character. I was really, really not happy with it at this point, And I was like, not at all motivated to continue. But for the most part, I, I think I recovered to a certain extent. I The background was really a defining point where I went from liking how this was going with a few issues to really hating it. And ultimately, I think I'm pretty happy with this piece, as just a, you know, getting back into things and trying something new. But I'm still really mad about some things. And like I said, a lot of it might just be because I suddenly spent a lot of time on it. So maybe in, I just get tired of things after looking at them for so long, or I get tired of things because they're not going how I want them to. And I'm investing so much time in it. So mentally, I think they need to be better than they are. I don't know. It's all good. So it is what it is. Watercolor, one of the things that's tricky about it is it's hard to recover from something. So if you put down something, everything else you put on top of it is going to be transparent or semi-transparent. Even opaque watercolor, not gouache, but the opaque, the watercolors that are listed with opaque properties aren't truly opaque. So once you put something down, you're pretty much committed to it and you do your best. So yeah, at this point, oh god, even just seeing it now in the video, where it was to where it is now, I'm so not happy. <laughs> it's reliving that. 
And I don't know, maybe you watching this, it's it's not a big deal to you, but it hurt. It hurt deep down. So, wow, this is a really long video. I guess I should have figured that out because it's like seven hours of footage or close to it. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't really have a script for this. I just figured I was going to wing it. I had a very, very long day of cleaning and I'm tired. I also rollerbladed, so I started by burning myself out and then added a lot of cleaning onto that. So I'm just ready for bed. I know everyone said this already, but the times the time change is, is messing with me. I'm, I'm sleepy now. So otherwise, I hope you're all having a great start to November and um, not stressing out too badly about December. I know I am. I get so stressed out about the holidays. And then once they're here, I finally get some time to relax and take some time off of work. And then they're gone before I know it. So I'm trying to keep myself like remembering that I spent so much time stressing out before the holidays, but it's such a nice break and I really should be focused on having that time to spend with my family and away from the office and really just relax for a few weeks and recover. I think I get like 10 days off, so it's it's really nice. And I'm looking forward to that. I don't know if I'll be painting much because if I'm with my family, I usually don't take out my sketchbook or paint, but that's okay. Time away from everything. Time to refresh, finish up my reading goals. I plan to read 60 books this year, and I think I'm back to being on schedule, but ah, I still have so much to read. I guess I had been talking more about what I was reading when I was doing the Birdtober. So I guess this one, um, the f well, audiobook wise, the first part of this, I was listening to the portrait, the picture of Dorian Gray. I don't know why somehow my brain thought it was portrait for the longest time, but I listened to the picture of Dorian Gray. And then I finished that up between painting and chores and started The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. Wong? I'm, I'm not sure how it's spelled, so I'm just getting confused. I should, I guess I could look it up, but I'm actually really enjoying that one, The Sword of Kaigen, um, so far. I'm not very far in. I just started it, and it's been keeping me company today as I did all my cleaning. And then in terms of actually reading, I'm finally reading New Spring, which is the prequel novel for... Wheel of Time. I read all of Wheel of Time a couple of years ago, or finished a couple of years ago. I think it took me three years to get through all the books, but I, I forgot about the, the prequel, and now that this show's coming out, it was like, oh, I really need to read that one <laughs> before the show, which is a shame because I like to have some space if I'm reading something so that I'm not reading it and then watching it back to back and then making those comparisons, which will happen anyway, but I tend to forget a lot of stuff, so... We'll see. I'm hesitantly excited about that show. I hope they do a good job with it. There's there's a lot of problems I had with the books that I think the show can fix, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they did with it. Otherwise, yeah, I'm completely, completely out of things to say. I've seen so many birds on my recent walks and skates, and I keep thinking, I should paint that. And I'm like, no, you're taking a break from birds. And then Today I like brought out my notebook to like maybe plan some things to talk about and saw my bird notes and then just got sad. I guess I wasn't completely ready to give up or finish with the birds. I'll go back to them soon. Maybe I'll bring that sketchbook and work on some birds over the winter break. That might be fun. Yeah. Wow. Completely. Completely done. <laughs> I need to get ready for bed, clearly. It's still pretty early. I... I'll take it easy tonight, read some, and then get go to bed early, be ready for tomorrow. So, yeah, I, I know I said, like, at the beginning, I originally thought I'd do white or light hair. I don't know what I ended up doing with the hair. I just kind of had fun with, like, cool and warm colors, so reds, purples, and blues. I, I don't know if I like how this ended up either. I noodled with it for a while, and then was just like, you know what, let's just, let's call it done. It, was, it just got to the point where I hadn't planned it out well enough and didn't want to add too much dark because then it would change the look of the hair and I kept that made that really dark background so the hair would really pop. 
And at this point, I'm just trying to add some sort of textural element to the background, some swoopy white wind or something to kind of balance out with like the movement of the hair and the glow of the eyes and also mask some of the patchiness of the background. But once again, I didn't plan it very well. So, oh well, <laughs> we'll plan more in the future and then see if I'm more upset when I do plan it out all the way. But yeah, otherwise I did want to make sure I kept some tape peel in because I know I like seeing when people do the tape peels. Unfortunately, I didn't think about how much where the clips were, the, the, paper, the tape would stick. So everywhere there was a clip, big piece of paper comes off. But otherwise, that's it. Hope you're all doing well. And I hope to see you or speak with you in a future video. Otherwise, take care of yourselves. Bye.